2023 and I'm still not dead. It's honestly kind of impressive. This isn't normally the type of video you'll you'll typically see on this channel, as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm already stuttering. Uh, this is much more of an unscripted, informal thing that um, I've noticed a lot of my friends sort of doing on social media, so I figured I'd give it a YouTube spin. And they're just basically talking about all the games they played in 2022, whether they came out in 2022 or years before. So I figured I would ride the coattails, jump on the bandwagon, and do what everyone else is doing, except far more poorly and far less formal, and the only time I can do it, which is now, so, uh... Hi. And we're gonna start off, I'm gonna do this in order, I'm gonna start off talking about games that I didn't, uh, that I played this year that didn't come out this year, these came out in the, in the past. Firstly, gotta talk about Fortnite, yes I own a physical copy of Fortnite, complete in box too. This is a game that didn't come out this year obviously, everyone knows what Fortnite is, I don't really need to explain it. And this wasn't the first year that I played it, but it was the first year that I've played it a lot. Uh, I've played it in the past, I tried it in like 2018 I want to say, and I didn't like it. There were periods of time where I wasn't feeling super well and couldn't go out with friends because of, you know, the, the vid and other such nonsense that happened the last couple of years. And Fortnite was a really good way of playing with my friends who I couldn't be with physically. I, I mostly play Battle Royale, no builds. And I've sunk a lot of time and money into Fortnite this year. It definitely deserves to be on this list, probably at number one. And I genuinely do enjoy it. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun to be had in Fortnite. It's like a normal battle royale that can't really be taken seriously just because of how much crazy shit happens. So really like Fortnite. Didn't come out this year, I know, but this is the first year that I really played it a lot. Another game that didn't come out this year, but this is the first year that I played it a lot, was uh, Dying Light. On this is the Nintendo Switch version specifically. I originally played this on the PS4. I played it on my girlfriend's PlayStation, but I wanted my own version of it because I really enjoyed the PlayStation 4 version of it. The Nintendo Switch port is amazing, honestly. It runs at a solid 30 FPS. It drops every once in a while, but only for a second. Like, the frame rate is pretty rock solid. I'm pretty sure it only outputs to 720p. But honestly, like, it's not that big of a deal. There's a big trade-off for a handheld console, and if you play your Switch handheld like I do a lot of the time, this is a very, very good way of experiencing Dying Light. It doesn't run perfectly, and I'm sure the Steam Deck will have its own better version of running Dying Light, but for a Nintendo Switch port, uh, outdated hardware of a very, very, like, beefy, open-world PlayStation game, this is a very good port, so I really did enjoy this. The big one this year, though, uh, I played this a lot, Danganronpa. I am about 13 years too late. Let me start off by saying there's not going to be any spoilers here for Danganronpa. I'm going to keep things very generic and very vague. I love Ace Attorney so much. A bunch of my friends were like, oh, well, when are you going to play Danganronpa? And I was like, well, I don't see the correlation there. But no, it is, uh, it is very similar in some ways. In other ways, it's very, very different. I played the entirety of Danganronpa 1. I really liked it. I started two shortly after I started one, and I'm still slowly getting through it. There's a lot of dialogue and interesting um, decisions made in like the court sort of uh, setting, like the mini games. There's like a Hangman's Gambit and stuff like that that I'm not super into. Yeah, overall, like honestly, for like good visual novel court sims, like this is a pretty good like if you want to play like a, a decent whodunit. Danganronpa is a pretty good way to do it. I recommend picking up the PS4 version of 1 and 2 Reload or the Switch version of Decadence while you can because these games are not super popular in North America, so getting physical copies of them is going to be a bit of a challenge. So um, pick these up while they're cheap because next generation, if we don't get any Danganronpa ports to the PS5 or Series X or whatever comes later or like any future re-releases, physical copies of these games are going to go for a lot. If you like visual novels and whodunits and court sims, this is a good one. Alright, bit of a lightning round. Two games I don't really have any footage of because I played them at my girlfriend's house. Um, Slime Rancher. I thought it was cute. I actually do have a six second clip of Slime Rancher that I recorded on the PC version. <laughs> You're welcome. And I also tried Elden Ring. Uh, I here's the thing, it's a Soulsborne, and I don't like Soulsborns. I think that uh, I just personally they're not my cup of tea. I think that they're a little too difficult for what they are. That's the reason I gave Jedi Fallen Order so much shit back then. Is uh, it's just not my sort of thing. I, I understand why people love them. I'm not saying Elden Ring's a bad game. I will say it's the most tolerable Soulsborne I've played. I didn't want to rage quit. 
uh, but I didn't really enjoy it and feel the need to keep coming back to it. So take that for what it's worth. I don't really have any footage of it, so I'm sorry about that. So next we're going to be getting into games that did come out this year, and I'm kind of cheating with this one because the digital version did come out last year, but the physical one came out this year. And that is Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I did play this. I played it originally at launch, um, and then I got a physical copy on the PS5. It's alright. It's a survival horror game. The theme of it is similar to Five Nights at Freddy's. The gameplay is very, very different, though. You're obviously still checking cameras and still looking out for animatronics, but it is a lot closer to sort of like a... Uh, Resident Evil 7 than it is to one of the original Five Nights at Freddy's games. It is a little different. The graphics are absolutely stunning. On the PS5 and PC versions of this game, the graphics look beyond impressive. Incredibly, incredibly nice. The gameplay is alright. I feel like it's a little too hard at points, and it is also a little buggy. It's an indie project, so it's understandably going to have some bugs. Uh, they're still working things out. But um, overall, I'd say it's a good experience. I, I do think it, it runs a bit uh, a bit long and a little bit too challenging. But, it, yeah, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you definitely get your money's worth out of this. This also isn't a full price game, by the way. I think you can get a, a physical copy right now from GameStop or Best Buy for 30 bucks. So, yeah, it's not a full price game. It's a little buggy, but it's worth it. I think that this is a pretty good experience. If, if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, you already bought it. And one month after the physical copy of Security Breach came out, Nintendo Switch Sports came out. I played the shit out of this for one month and then never touched it again. I don't like it that much. It just feels just different enough to the point where it doesn't feel close enough to Wii Sports. And that, to me, kind of ruins it. Because Wii Sports had a very like familiar, you know, easy to pick up, hard to master sort of feel to it. That felt very rewarding. Switch Sports doesn't really feel like that. My favorite thing about Nintendo Switch Sports is that it inspired me to pick up Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort again and start playing those. And I've been playing those a lot recently. Those are very, very good games. If you can get this for cheap, which is hard to do because it's a first party Nintendo game, it's worth it for like a little distraction. Bowling's alright, I've heard golf is pretty good, but half the sports are net sports. I'm personally not a huge fan of this. I think they could have done a better job, personally. If you can get it for cheap somehow, it's not terrible. But you know what is terrible? Pokemon Violet. This game sucks. Uh, this is one of the worst RPGs that I've ever played in my entire life, simply because it doesn't run. When I first popped it into my Switch, my Switch wasn't connected to the internet, so I couldn't download any patches, and I played it without turning it off for a solid week, and by the end of the week, it was completely unplayable. The frame rate had tanked, uh, collision just didn't work a lot of times, and I've heard that patching it makes it a little better, but that's a huge gripe I have with Nintendo Switch first party games. They shouldn't need patches because the whole point of the Switch is that you're meant to be able to play it anywhere. And what if you're playing the Switch somewhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi? You need to be able to play the Switch. Unless they come out with a 4G model, there's no excuse. You sh there should be finished copies on these cartridges. And I'm not impressed with Pokemon Violet. I think that it is... Uh, very buggy. I don't think that it looks exceptionally wonderful. Gameplay-wise, it's solid. It's Pokemon, so if you like Pokemon, you'll probably enjoy it. But performance-wise, gameplay-wise, I don't think it is really up to snuff, especially when you consider the fact that Breath of the Wild is very similar in scope to this game and runs infinitely better. So didn't really like this one and this was a topic of a recent video i made along with the next game i'm going to talk about i don't have a physical copy of this so i'm going to use the first game as my physical copy pretend that there's a two somewhere on this modern warfare 2 um speaking of a game that was not finished when it launched yeah it was uh, a bit rough at first you couldn't play with your friends the online matches would just crash on the pc I, I like follow me on twitter if you want proof of that i have posted numerous videos of modern warfare 2 just fucking crashing in the middle of a match i've heard the console versions better this is obviously the console version of modern warfare 1 i chose modern warfare 2 on battle.net because i assumed that it would perform better and be a better version I assumed poorly. It's not a bad game. The They've ironed out a lot of the bugs and the shooting mechanics do feel satisfying. I don't think it feels as sort of satisfying or as precise as Modern Warfare 1. I do think that the uh, shooting was a lot like more clean and a lot more uh, like snappy in this game. I feel like in Modern Warfare 2, 
there's a lot of bloom and a lot of kick where there doesn't need to be. And also, they got rid of slide canceling. Why'd they get rid of slide canceling? That was one of my favorite things to do in Modern Warfare 1, especially on Warzone. Just off the top of my head, I did play a couple other games this year for the first time that didn't, well, they released this year, but not technically. Uh, the Castlevania Advanced Collection came out earlier this year. I played a shit ton of Circle of the Moon. I really, really liked it. I'm a Metroidvania slut. I will pretty much play any Metroidvania ever released and enjoy it. So that's on there. That's digital only. I couldn't hold up a physical copy, unfortunately. Also, another thing I can't really hold up physically, but I can hold up the one of the guitars. I've played so much Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition this year. So fucking much. This is probably my favorite mod ever created. It is so, like, the amount of stuff you can do in World Tour Definitive Edition, custom songs, custom characters, custom stages, everything custom. It is such a good experience, and we've barely cracked the tip of the iceberg. Like, the modding community for Guitar Hero, it's fucking crazy. There's another Guitar Hero game that just came out, well, game that just came out, it's a fan project called Fast GH3, which basically uh, cleans up Guitar Hero 3's engine to the point where you can run uh, chart files from a web browser. And, like, you can just play Guitar Hero 3 chart files, like, instantly from anywhere. You can install, like, the Guitar Hero 2 theme if you want it to look like that. It's a really cool experience, and honestly, I'm super happy that rhythm games are having a bit of a resurgence, especially the 5 fret ones, because, man, I fucking love Guitar Hero. And who knows, maybe 2023 will be the year that I finally start streaming. I am way too anxious to do that, though. I would love to stream Guitar Hero if you guys would want to watch it, but man, my anxiety just goes through the roof whenever I'm in front of a bunch of people. At least with this, this sort of shit, I can edit it, so it's like, I can make myself actually look smart. Anyways, what did you guys play? I would love to hear recommendations please leave them in the comments because i am always looking for new stuff to try out obviously i don't have like a preferred genre if this is anything to go by so um definitely let me know uh what you guys would recommend what you've played this year whether it was bad or good whether or not you agree or disagree with me with any of the games i listed and um, I hope that everyone has a really uh, happy and safe new year in 2023. Hopefully I will be able to produce more than like four videos this year. And hopefully 2023 will be a good year for all. And um, hopefully I will see you guys real soon. So peace out. Take care. Happy new year.